Osteoporosis is a very serious bone disease that affects over 2 million Australians. Today is World Osteoporosis Day and we're going to give you the ultimate guide to keeping your bones healthy. First up, I'm joined by Professor Sam Brook, who is a health and, and also uh, very shortly our um, uh, fitness expert and our nutritionist. But first uh, to you, Philip. Welcome to the program. Thanks. At what age are our bones optimum in terms of bone density and health? Probably about 20 or 25. Your, your skeleton's like a bank account. You make deposits when you're young, and from about 30 onwards you start to make withdrawals. And if you make too many withdrawals, you get a fracture. If young people are on dairy-free, calcium-free diets, how serious can that be later in life? Yes, yeah, so calcium is obviously important in terms of building bone strength, so is mm -hmm. vitamin D, and very low dietary calciums are certainly bad for your bones. Okay, 40 plus, it starts to deteriorate, um, we, and you mentioned they're from the age of 30. So, so what do we do? Um, a bone density test, if, if you've got history, is that correct? Yeah, I think if you've got risk factors, then see a GP and he'll order a bone density test, and that'll tell you your, your risk at that time, and you can do something even more immediate then. Mm. Bone density test is really easy, having had, you just lie there and they zap this machine over, so there's yeah. no Takes needles. Takes no, Yeah, right. no needles, no nothing, it's no easy. No needles, very simple. Okay. What is a family history? Give me an example. Well, if, you've mother, if your mother's had a fracture, especially a hip fracture, um, mm. if they've had multiple fractures, your mother or father, that's the sort of thing. Um, just getting a little bit shorter as you get older is mm -hmm. probably not, but if they've lost a lot of height, hip fractures, spine fractures, in the family, your immediate family, that's a positive family history. Okay, men and women, we just assume most women are at risk of uh, osteoporosis because of menopause, uh, but men also. So what's, what does it average out between men and women? Yeah, so it's a myth that men don't get it. About one in two women will break a bone in their life and about one in three men. And men sort of think they're immune, but they're not. And we're seeing a lot more men getting osteoporosis. Okay, as, as we age, and I'm talking 30s and 40s, what do we have to do? There is medication once you've been diagnosed with us, but what do we do? Yeah, so medications for the more severe cases, but for the milder cases, you can start by improving your dietary calcium, mm -hmm. uh, making sure you've got adequate vitamin D, and mm -hmm. doing appropriate exercise. Um, can we, once we have been diagnosed with it, can you improve your bones? Yes. So some of the new medications can improve your bone density and reverse the condition, mm -hmm. and you can take that as a daily tablet or a weekly tablet or a monthly tablet, or even an injection once or twice a year. There are some cancer treatments which leach the bones, uh, and what should you do under those circumstances? Yeah, well certainly certain types of cancer, prostate and breast cancer, the treatments can sometimes make you lose calcium, mm -hmm. so you can see a doctor about that, and these treatments I'm talking about will stop that process. Well, thank you very much for part one of our uh, exercise, literal exercise this morning. That's uh, Professor Sambrook. Now we're going to talk about making your bones stronger through exercise. Amelia Burton joins us. Good morning, Good Amelia. Good morning. Morning, Carrie Ann. Now, what is the type of exercise that physically yep. helps build a bone? Yep. Basically, strength training. So anything that's weight bearing, but it needs to be, you know, muscle pulling on bones. So although walking and swimming are fantastic forms of exercise, mm. they're not going to be the best forms if you're really wanting to improve your bone density. So that means weights. Weights. Pumping iron. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger type weights. Mm. It can be using your own body weight, but in a way that gets the muscles quivering. So exercises that actually um, put a bit more load on the muscles um, mm -hmm. and what that will do is muscle pulling on bone will actually help improve your bone density. So that's what we're trying to seek, muscle yep. pulling on bone. Yep. Now I notice you've got um, uh, yep. this so, exercise which we yep. can all do at home if we yep. want with weights. With weights. So lunges are great that you can do and you can do them with or without weights. Mm -hmm. You could even just hold two tin cans if you have mm -hmm. um, at home but again without the weights would still be adequate for mm -hmm. helping improve your bone but if, density. if you're walking fast Yep. That's still weight bearing because you it, are using your weight. It is weight bearing, and yes, if you were walking fast and walking up a hill. Mm -hmm. But I, what I would love to see is when you get back from your walk, putting aside about 10 to 20 minutes of doing um, three or four of these types of exercises. So another one, for example, would be your push ups. Okay. So you get back from your walk, you might do 12 lunges, mm -hmm. and then you might go down and do some push ups. So this is just not for your shoulders, this is for your bones. Bones. How many times a week um, at varying ages should you be doing yes. this? Yes. Look, uh, three times 
a week for about 10 to 20 minutes. 20 mm -hmm. is ideal doing these types of exercises. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yep. Um, looking at some of those other exercises there, we'll yep. just leave it up. But as always, Amelia yep. Burton, thank, thank you, you very much. much. We're now going to move on to nutrition. You've got to eat, as our professor just uh, explained, you must consume uh, the right sort of food to be able to enjoy healthy bones. Zoe Bingley Pullen joins us. Um, I just talked to the professor and he was suggesting three serves of calcium, which is 100 milligrams of calcium. Can you tell me what 100 milligrams of calcium look, is? It's all what about, is that, 94 yogurts? Or? It's, it, it, look, it's all about, first of all, choosing the quality of the product mm -hmm. as well. So if you're choosing dairy products, you really do need to be getting around minimum 150, um, 150 grams within that yogurt. A glass, of yo mm -hmm. a glass of milk will do it. But again, it is a little bit harder to maybe get in some of the green leafy vegetables. You really do need to be getting your recommended daily across servings. The board. Five servings of vegetables okay, across so the board. Just once again for me, one 1,000 milligrams, 1, milligrams would be um, what? Of, so, so you'd have to have a have cup have, of yogurt a day? It's so basically it's getting your three servings would be a cup of yogurt, would be so, sorry, 150 grams of yogurt, a cup of milk. Um, if you can get between maybe a couple of tablespoons of yogurt, but still get your ample mm. servings, those five servings of vegetables or your green leafy vegetables, which actually a serving is a cup. So, so you really, if you so are... So calcium is in here? You still have calcium in mm. green leafy vegetables right. as well as your dairy products as well. You've got some cheese here. And a lot of us sort of get a bit scared of cheese. Yeah. I adore cheese, but I always go, oh, Same. I know I may as well just apply it straight to my thighs. Um, <laughs> isn't that funny, Greg? <laughs> Um, but we shouldn't be scared of it. Look, we shouldn't be scared of any high fat foods because fat is actually very necessary mm -hmm. in the diet. It has anti-inflammatory qualities mm -hmm. as well as basically being good from a satiation point of view. It's just not over-consuming in okay. these foods more oh, than anything else. Oh, that moderation the word The balance again. word. <laughs> okay, green leafy vegetables, you must have those in your diet. Absolutely. Because they have, I didn't actually know they yeah, had Yeah, they do have calcium in it. The other thing which is really interesting is if you can eat things like sardines or if you get tin salmon, if you can actually eat the bones that's in it as well, hmm. it doesn't look if you just mix it up into it, they contain calcium. Mm -hmm. And actually what's interesting, the skin of salmon actually contains glucosamine. So oh. glucosamine is actually very good for joint mobility yes. and building cartilage as well. And of course we've got all the other nuts and all this sort of stuff, eggs. So and this is more your vitamin D, cod liver oil, mm -hmm. yolk. But the number one thing I probably want to really point out is to not drink things like soft drinks. They actually leach calcium out of the bones. We're seeing oh. a huge percentage of kids in America which have... <gasps> To have onset of osteoporosis. Yes, it's because they don't exercise enough and, and they, they don't have a balanced diet, but they live off these types mm. of things. Indeed, as always, thank you very thank much, you. Zoe. More